It's too early. The sun isn't even out. El tren a las nubes. San Antonio de las Cobras. Amazing engineering feat. Welcome back, everyone, to Salta, Argentina. We are here, and it is early. It is far, far too early. It's 5.57 a.m. Why the heck are we up this early? Well, today, we're going on a train to the clouds. So come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. All right, we're out here at Plaza, no, Paseo, Balar. Dude, I don't even know. It's, it's too early. The sun isn't even out. But there's a bunch of buses here. One of these buses is the bus we're going to get on. We'll take a bus for uh, like four hours up to uh, the train. We get on the train. We take the train to some amazing sights. Um, honestly, I haven't done a lot of research into this. Uh, I'm going in a little unprepared. But uh, maybe we'll have a little time on the bus to talk a little bit more about exactly what we're going to see. So we're going to see some pretty cool stuff. As far as I know, it's basically a, uh, a train that goes up way, way up into the mountains, like up above 4,000 meters. And um, it, it used to be part of the uh, Argentine Railroad, but now it's just like a tourist thing. It's basically like what we were trying to do when we were in Ecuador. And we tried to uh, go around uh, La Nariz del Diablo, the nose of the devil, that old tourist train that doesn't run up there anymore. But here in Argentina, up in Salta, apparently there is one. So. Let's figure out what bus we gotta get on. All right, so we figured it out. There's a station here. You go into the station, you give them your passport, they print out a ticket. And the ticket tells you what bus you're supposed to be on. There's also a guy here selling uh, Caramelo de Coca, right? Like uh, uh, Coca candies, like this. They have like honey and Coca, a little bit of powdered coca because we're going to be up at like super high altitudes and uh, if you start to feel a little altitude sick the coca is supposed to help we'll see we were up at super high altitudes before when we were in Ecuador I don't know we're gonna be up there for a while though so who knows might as well be prepared I got some water too you always want to be hydrated when you go up to high altitudes anyway I gotta find my bus Right, so we made our first stop there's actually a lot of stops along the route and here you can see the Sun is out now and you can see the mountains out in the distance we're getting closer to the mountains very very beautiful view we're here in uh, Campo Quijano and it's a small like town that was created as a railroad settlement like a, a basically a base for the railroad coming through when they were building the railroad. It was, uh, I guess the town was created back in 1921, so it's over 100 years old now. And we're stopping here for like, I don't know, just 10 minutes or so. There's a bunch of tour buses. We're not the only tour bus. And you can buy stuff here. There's people selling stuff. Um, little 
I guess, snacks and coffee and whatnot. I don't know if I'm gonna get anything, but the stop here is really just to like see the train station here, which I don't, I don't really think is functioning anymore. They have a, a train back there on the track. They have like an old train car here that people are like taking pictures in front of. And they have a station here. I wonder if this is, uh, I don't think this is active anymore. I'm gonna go in the back here, we can see. Because we can see the tracks back here if we go around the back. And they have a train here out on the tracks. But I don't, I don't think this is active anymore. While we were on the bus, there is uh, like a tour guide on the bus who's been giving us information. And um, not only that, but just happened to be on the same bus as a group of like 11 people who are coming from Cordoba. And, um, well, here's a sign with distances to different places. Anyway, there's a group on the bus with us. It's coming from Cordoba. And they, um, Yeah, let's see. There is a sign here. Doesn't say if there are any trains. It looks like this. there is a regional service that runs from Guemes to here. Guemes to Salta to Campo Quijano. But it's not connected to like a larger system. What I was saying was there's a, there's a group who's with us on the tour and they um, like they have a tour guide who came with them because they're they're on like a, a pre-packaged tour that's going to a lot of places up here and they have their own tour guide who's traveling with and he was talking about the train and i guess this like all used to be part of the same system right so back in the 1930s they created a train system uh the the train system in argentina was much more extensive extensive back then and it's been cut down a lot now since like the 90s um but back in the you know 30s they were trying to build a train from all the way from buenos aires up through like uh, rosario cordoba tucuman salta and then up across the mountains and into chile and during the peron era in like the 40s um they they in the 50s they like continued from the salta part up to like through the pass and into chile so like this construction was all of, of the train that we're gonna ride on was like during that time, constructed during that time in the 40s and the 50s. But at one point there was a train that went all the way from Buenos Aires up through Rosario, Cordoba, and then Tucumán, all the way up to Salta, then up like along the route that we're taking on the bus. But there was a train that used to run along through here and it would run, connect up with the train that we're gonna take in Tren a las Nubes, across the mountains into Chile. Truly uh, a pretty amazing engineering feat and it's one of the highest trains uh, like in the whole world. It's cool that we're able to like go on this train and see at least this section that goes up to the higher, like up in the high pass. Anyway, I think we have to get back on our bus pretty soon. We're only staying here for like 10 minutes. And uh, we're going to continue on. Eventually, we end up at a station called San Antonio de las Cobres. And that's the station where we catch the train uh, and go up through the mountains. The train, tren a las nubes, the train to the clouds. Stopped here just for a very quick, basically just stop, take a photo, stop, film. There's this uh, old train track running through here. And we saw, you could see that, this track running across the river. We've been running alongside a river. 
sort of down there on the other side. It's a mostly dry riverbed at this point because this is the dry season here. Really beautiful views. stopped here at uh, I believe this is called El Francito. Beautiful view up here in the mountains. We're above 3,500 meters now so pretty high up. It's a nice little spot up here. There is a little cafe up there. Now the service we took, which is of course Tren a las Nubes, they have their own sort of reserved area over here where we can get um, like a drink and a snack. But I'm actually kind of interested to look around. The line to get the drink and the snack is still a little bit long, so. We're gonna kind of wait it out. We're gonna do what we always do. <laughs> We're gonna hang around, wait it out to the back, and eventually we'll we'll sneak in there at the last minute. So this is the Capilla San Cayetano, Chapel of San Cayetano. We found a llama. All right, we head back to the bus. And uh, we are down now to 60% battery because I've been filming some stuff on the way up here. So, my next stop will be Estacion, I don't know, the train station in uh, San Antonio de las Cobres. All right, we've reached San Antonio de las Cobres. And uh, here it is, San Antonio de las Cobres. It's a small mining town, like, I think she said seven, our guide said 7,900 people. And the mines are up in the hills here, copper mines, hence the name San Antonio, San Antonio de los Cobres. The station, and you can see it right there, El Tren a las Nubes. You can sort of see it behind the uh, station up there. Let's go up there, I'm gonna go up there and get a better look. There are people here at the train station, lots of vendors selling all kinds of stuff. Lots of like woven alpaca stuff, it looks like. Wool, sweaters and blankets, hats, gloves. People selling water and candies. I saw some people selling some more of the uh, coca candies that we bought down at the station in Salta. This is a whole operation that comes through here. We are on one bus, but there's like a caravan of multiple buses um, because the train, of course, seats way more people than one bus. There's multiple carriages on the train. So they bus everybody up here. Now, what was really interesting is on the way up, our tour guide was giving us, you know, like a history, um, pointing out things about history in certain areas and also uh, like geology and things like that. But also interestingly, she was pointing out things like uh, about the local communities, you know, like this is a, this community, this is its name, and this is basically how many people live here. And they're all very small subsistence communities on the way up. And this, where we are now in uh, San Antonio de las Cobres, is probably like the largest one that we've been, well, it's definitely the largest one that we've been to. All the other ones that we've been through are very, very small with maybe just a few houses and like a little school locally that, and a chapel that will like connect all the neighboring communities around there. So it's a really interesting tour to learn about, uh, 
about the communities on the way up, not just about like the history and um, and the geology and all of those things. So that's very cool. I think I think we should go up and take a look at the the train, right? Let's get some up close look at the train because that's one of the things, honestly, that I've been really looking forward to. So here we go. So here it is, the tren, el tren de las nubes. And as you can see, lots of carriages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like nine carriages. Can't really go up any further than this. They have it sort of blocked off up there. But uh, you can see the engine here. Just a typical, typical diesel train engine. I don't know what type of engine that is. <laughs> Once again, I've said this before in some of the other videos we made about trains. I like trains and they're cool, but I don't know a lot about them. So I guess if anybody down in the comments knows what kind of uh, engine they're using here to haul the tren a las nubes up into the mountains, let me know. Take one last look at San Antonio de las Cupres. And then we'll head up, hop on our train carriage. So we're on the train here. We are. And they've got water. There are bathrooms. There's actually oxygen in case anybody needs it because we are going to be going up pretty high. We're at 3,775 meters right now, which. Significantly higher than uh, than where we were before when we were in like Cuenca. The train is pretty much full and we are going to be heading out in, I don't know, a few minutes, I think. I think we're only here for a few more minutes and then we head out. And I'm not exactly sure what we're going to see up there, but uh, pretty excited. There are amazing views from the train. We're right at the start, right at the very start of the trip. Oh. When the train goes around curves, you can see, it's hard to see there's rocks in the way, but when the train goes around curves, you can see the front of the train from back here. Here's the Pompeja Hot Springs which right now is not functioning apparently, but it's like a water mirror where mineral water, I think, bubbles up. Entonces, la, la, 
está permitido el descenso en este lugar. ¿sí? Es una parada donde vamos a ver una maniobra, pero, pero tiene que tener mucho cuidado porque el día de la cosecha desaparece todo. No queda a gusto que en la, en el mes que se hace el ritual de la Pachamama se utiliza para hacer ese tipo. Dale. Recuerden que acá a 10 minutos estamos en el diálogo. Dale. Se la vamos a Sale y se engancha, pero en el coche G. O sea, están adelante del coche G, va para atrás y se engancha atrás del coche G. Y ahora se viene el tercer movimiento. ¿Cuál es el tercer movimiento? Va a empujar al coche G nuevamente para adelante. ¿Por qué? Porque las vías terciarias, la, estas tres vías, solamente las vamos a tener en este lugar. Unos metros más adelante. Es para...
we stopped just here, just past the uh, viaduct, just right over there. Beautiful view behind us. And you can see the train waiting for us over there. That was a really cool experience to go over the viaduct. They had the train actually, what was happening, I've realized now, uh, when we stopped at uh, Min Mina Colona, or the, the mine back there, was the train was moving some of the carriages from the back of the train to this part of the train, and then moving the engine to this end of the train, right? Basically so that the train, the engine then pushes the carriages over the viaduct which is just down there and then pulls them back so that you can get views and everybody can like lean out the window and take their selfies and then the train is all in position ready to just take us back down all the way back down to um, San Antonio de las Cobres so basically it just runs all the way up here switches pushes you across the uh, viaduct and then pulls you back down Anyway, down over this way, there were some people selling some stuff right here because the train makes a stop here. And I think if we walk down to the end of the train, we can get a view of the viaduct, like a stationary view without, um, without being on the train, without having to lean out the window. So let's go do that. Well, we have, we have about 15% battery left on the old camera here. And uh, we're up at like, 4,200 feet or 4,200 meters up here. It's quite high. I am a little bit out of breath just from walking around. Everybody seems to be like huffing and puffing and a few people have unfortunately gotten a little more uh, like altitude sickness. I'm starting to get a little bit of a headache but uh, that's okay. We're gonna power through. Let's go see if we can get a view of the viaduct. Can't get a view of the viaduct over here. It's very, very windy out here. Hopefully, y'all can, can hear me. Get a beautiful view of the viaduct. This really is a very, very amazing engineering feat. That it's this high up, 4,200 meters up, built this gigantic viaduct spanning this huge gap. And of course, it was part of a, you know, a greater engineering feat, right? part of the railroad, which was built all the way from Buenos Aires, all the way across Argentina, into Chile, and over to the Pacific Ocean, connecting the two oceans, the Atlantic Ocean and the uh, Pacific Ocean by rail. Truly amazing, amazing engineering feat. And even though we can't, can't take the trip all the way from Buenos Aires, all the way across the continent to the Pacific Ocean anymore, can at least take this one little part of the trip and try and remember or have nostalgia for how it, how it used to be. They are raising the flag, the Argentine flag. They got on a speaker playing the anthem. And raising the flag up here. Not gonna lie, that was pretty epic. I had no idea they were gonna do that. It was very cool though. Very, very cool. All right, we're back, we're back down. Down from the train, down in San Antonio de las Cobres. We're here in the town of San Antonio de las Cobres. And we're stopped here for just a few moments. Well, actually like well, almost an hour. 
get something to eat. There's a market up here that I think has some food in it. We're gonna go check that out. And uh, I'm running very, very low on battery in the camera. El Mercado Artesanal. El Mercado Artesanal. And I think there is food in here. Let's go check it out. Looks like there's another bus here. Some other people unloading. This looks like our spot. Had a very simple meal in that restaurant. A nice bowl of soup and uh, like a, just a plate of some grilled meat with rice. It was very, very simple, but it was very, very tasty and very filling because I hadn't really eaten that much all day. And having been up at high altitude, like I had a headache and man, it felt really, really good to, uh, to eat this food. But we're basically out of, almost completely out of uh, battery on the camera. So I didn't really film much on the way back down. It was a pretty, uh, pretty boring bus ride back down and we ended up back in the city of Salta. And just like that, we're back. We're back in the city of Salta. The trip down was uneventful. I slept actually part of the way because I am running on fumes right now, man. We woke up real early, didn't eat too much today, and it's already dark again. We, uh, we left when it was dark and we returned when it's dark, but that was a really great trip, honestly. Uh, I would 100% recommend that if you're coming here to Salte. It's a little bit expensive, but I think it's worth it because it's sort of a once in a lifetime kind of an opportunity. So definitely, definitely check it out. I had a great time and uh, we saw some really, really cool things. We met a bunch of really, really nice people too on the bus uh, on the way there and also like on the train itself. Um, it was good. It was really fun and I 100% would do it again. So. That's gonna be it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Stick around, there's plenty more videos coming from here in Salta, and we'll see you next time.